Good evening, good morning. Welcome to week three of PSSL 6240 here at the Safety and Security Leadership Program. I uh, just want to start off with uh, some announcements. Again, first announcement, uh, Adobe Connect session this Thursday, this Thursday at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I'll send out this week a, a website or a, a link. All you have to do is link on, is click on that and you'll get into the Adobe Connect session. And it's a, a way to see PowerPoint and see each other and have a little bit more of a, a, a face-to-face interactive session in this class, uh, as well as an opportunity to give the person briefing an opportunity, as well as to have office hours with me. So Adobe Connection Connect session this Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'll send out reminders this week. Paper due. Paper is due next Sunday. Uh, so at Sunday at 11.59 p.m., uh, you should have your paper uploaded into the website. Uh, I am not very looking very kindly on extensions. Uh, the reason why is because this is a short, concise paper. It's not meant for you to take you know, massive amounts of research. Uh, it's Hopefully, it's a measure of how much you've learned in this past week, too, and how much you can you can think about definitions of terrorism. So again, uh, paper due eleven fifty nine p.m. Um, if there's extenuating circumstances, let me know. But I can tell you, if you send me an email eleven fifty p.m. on Sunday with an issue, I'm I'm not going to look very kindly on that. And then finally, grading grades. I just want to make this clear, a couple of points clear from the onset. Uh, one, your your participation grades are going to be a lot higher. And then your grades on the paper. Uh, every every semester, I'll get someone that says, "Oh, I got a. I thought I was doing well because I got perfect score on participation. Why and I got a B minus on the paper? Uh, participation or the the discussion boards are meant to be graded lightly, graded a little bit easier. Um, and the the paper, I'm expecting a lot more analytical rigor. Uh, I, in discussion again, I can accept opinions and 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 things like that, and editorializing because you're interacting with your your classmates but the papers are meant to be a solid well thought out product um just so you know the grading is going to be a lot harder and i'd also just want to add again i I get this every semester everyone says hey i i got a b i thought i deserved an a very few people get a's on the paper um they're meant to be graded harshly uh and i will grade them hard harder um because i'm looking for how well you can you can put analytical rigor put a strong thesis together and back it up with strong argument. Um, so I want to make that clear at the onset. Uh, you should, you know, grades are important and you should want to do well in class, but if you show improvement, if you, you, you interact well with your, your presentations, you do a good presentation, um, that will carry a lot more weight in the long run than a, a numeric grade. So I want to make that kind of clear at the, at the onset. So, review of last week, and what I want you to do right now is pause me and go to the example paper that I sent, um, and that will give you a pretty good example of what I'm looking for for paper one. Okay, so welcome back, and I hope you, you got a good understanding of what I'm looking for for the paper, how to pin your arguments to certain facets, and, and, and how, to, how to have a good contrasting flow in your paper. Um, and I just want to, 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 to emphasize the paper, again, I, I give you nine scenarios, almost the same ones that you got in the discussion section. And I want you to argue what is terrorism, what is not terrorism, and I want you to, to, to pin your argument points. And what, I, what you saw in that, again, the example are, are three points. You don't necessarily have to choose those three. In fact, I don't encourage you to choose those three, uh, but Choose three that are applicable applicable to the scenario you choose and and make the argument. Pin your argument against those three. And I just want to review some of the stuff that you guys brought up in your discussion sections and that were brought up in the lecture. Um, so again, a big contrasting point, military versus non-military. Um, is it terrorism against if it's a military target? Um, and this would include things like the Fort Hood shooting, the USS Cole, um, you know, uh, an argument that some of you made, uh, and I, I can't remember who said the USS Cole should not be terrorism. That is a legitimate argument, and that's a great a great way to to, to pin your paper or a good argument point to to pin your paper. If you want to argue that that 
uh, only civilians should be included in a definition of terrorism. Combatants versus non-combatants. And some of you had this argument. Um, I can't remember the exact argument, but, uh, and I've had this two semesters straight, and I never really thought about this, but, so you have military versus non-military, and that's two separate categories. And then within something like Fort Hood, where you have civilians that support the military, and then you have military as well, or the Pentagon, where you have civilians that support the military uh, as well as military. Are those civilians combatants? I'll give you my argument. Yes, I think they are. If you are supporting, if you're at Fort Hood and you're at the Readiness Processing Center, you are supporting military. You are a combatant. If you're at the Pentagon, I would consider you a combatant. And therefore, I don't want to say a legitimate target. I don't like to say that word, but certainly not in the same category as uh, someone sitting in a pizza parlor who gets blown up or a bar mitzvah or, 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 or pure civilian target. Uh, so again, that's another point to bring up in your paper. Uh, state versus non-state. Um, this always is a, a key point. Um, it, it, a lot of people and, and myself or reflecting the general population would, would say that a non terrorism has to be committed by a non-state actor. Uh, of course, this there is state-based terrorism. Uh, and what is state-based terrorism? What is the difference between a uh, Al-Quds Force Iranian operative conducting an attack and an F-16 conducting an attack? Is one terrorism and one not just because of the tactic used? Uh, just because it's a people? Again, food for thought, something to consider. Targeting within or outside the locus of conflict, and I brought this up in the, in the lecture. Uh, if the Irgun uh, chose to blow up targets in London, does that make it more of a terrorist organization? And you saw that in the example paper I, I sent out. Um, you know, the, the Irgun never did that. The FLN never did that. Their focus was on the locus of conflict. Uh, the Al-Qaeda, their locus of conflict is Saudi Arabia. However, they chose to attack targets in New York and Washington. Does that make it more of a terrorist attack? If you're fighting in the locus of conflict, and again, you can argue this about the you know the example of an IED in Iraq. That's the locus of conflict. But if you took that IED and moved it to New York, that is a terrorist attack because it's outside the locus of conflict. And again, people disagree on what's the locus of conflict, what is what is uh, applicable. So make sure that's that's considered in your argument. But I also want to bring up another example. If you bring up the Fort Hood shooting, um, that was conducted, and if you assume uh, Hassan, uh, Nadal Hassan is a soldier of Allah, as he proclaimed himself, um, he, his attack was outside the locus of conflict in Fort Hood. If he conducted that same attack in downtown Baghdad, I don't think many people would say that's terrorism, but because it was Fort Hood, it was outside the locus of conflict, so it should be considered ter terrorism. However, let's flip that argument on its head. Um, we say the locus of conflict is Iraq. Certainly, if you're ISIS or Al-Qaeda, you know, Fort Hood is certainly within your locus of conflict and therefore maybe a little bit more of a legitimate target. Again, these are just argument points to, to consider as you go through this. Attacking the apparatus of government. Nelson Mandela chose to attack the apparatus of government, police, military, uh, the FLN, or I'm sorry, the Irgun chose to attack mainly the apparatus of government, the, the British civil service and soldiers. Uh, does that make it not terrorism or does that make it terrorism? Uh, does that make it terrorism? Again, argument points. War zone versus non-war zone. Um, some of you mentioned the USS Cole was terrorism because it was outside a known war zone. Well, that's a great definition from the United States perspective, but if you're shitting in Yemen and a destroyer group comes into your harbor, it's hard to say that that's not a war zone. Um, there might not be shooting, but that's still a uh, 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 large military asset rolling up in your neighborhood that you uh, might disagree with. Um, again, Fort Hood shooting, that's another great example. To us, 
Iraq and Afghanistan are war zones, and therefore Nadal Hassan violated it by attacking Fort Hood. Well, that's convenient for us, because our troops and our armed troops are there, and we don't like to think Fort Hood is not a war zone, but if you're ISIS, and you're deploying soldiers from Fort Hood, or you're Al-Qaeda, and you're deploying soldiers from Fort Hood, that's a war zone to you. Um, so again, those, those are just another aspect to consider. Political narrative. This is something that separates um, uh, shootings, random shootings that we saw in Columbine and Sandy Hook from maybe the shootings in San Bernardino and at Fort Hood. Uh, certainly, Nadal Hassan had a political narrative behind his shooting, and the Columbine shootings didn't have that, that tight political now narrative. However, comma, you could also make the argument that the Sandy Hook guy, even though he was mentally deranged, was inciting some sort of political narrative. Uh, the Columbine shooters, you can ma ar make the argument that they had a political narrative as, as strange and as, as obscene as it was. You could also argue that Nadal Hassan might have had a political narrative, but he could have been mentally ill using a political narrative to conduct his attacks. Um, that was just a, a vehicle for a mentally ill person to, to conduct those those shootings. Uh, so again, that's another aspect to pin your paper. So if you're saying something is terrorism, you know, you can make these arguments that it's uh, uh, a political narrative. Levels of oppression. Um, this is a interesting aspect. I don't think we touched on it in too much detail, but we should. Um, if you believe, you can make an argument that ISIS is not a terrorist or is a legitimate violent movement because of it's being Sunnis are being oppressed on both the Syrian and Iraqi side. Not a very favorable argument, but possibly a legitimate argument you can make. Um, you can make the argument, and it's a certainly a legitimate one, that is if you're oppressed, a very highly oppressed person, you can engage in violence against civilians. In the show you saw about the FLN in Algeria, the, the French had taken all the wealth from the Algerian society and occupied the most arable lands. Does that give them, were they so oppressed that that gives them a, a, a vehicle for violence? Um, politically popular versus non-popular. And you can make this argument for insurgency, and I think some people did here. Um, again, the IED in Iraq, that is killing people because it's... Um, uh, a part of an, an insurgents organization. It's not just a random three or four people engaging in violence. Uh, so again, that separates insurgency from terrorism. So those are, again, some, I think most of the points, argument points that can define what is terrorism, what is not, that we went into detail. Um, so again, in the paper, I just wanted to, to, to cover intro, argument, rebuttal, and if there's policy recommendations, please put them in there. So your paper should flow with that structure. So intro paragraph, three to four argument points. Again, you can pull them from the list I just mentioned, or you can pull them from a, a list that you, you derive. Rebuttal arguments, address the rebuttal arguments, and then give policy recommendations if required. And do this all in about 1,800 words. And just again, some illustrative examples. Uh, you saw the videos in the Urgun. Urgun, arguably a highly oppressed organization, if you think of the backdrop of the Holocaust, focused on the apparatus of government within the locus of conflict. So you can make the argument, and as you saw in the previous paper, that the Urgun is not a terrorist organization because of these factors. FLN, highly oppressed government, highly oppressed however, focus on civilians within the locus of conflict. So you can make the argument that the FLM should be a terrorist organization despite being highly oppressed because of the focus on civilians. But again, you could say within a combat zone, so however you want to phrase it is up to you. And then Al-Qaeda, I think this is a clear one, a lightly oppressed organization. You know, the United States had been stationing troops in Saudi Arabia. Uh, focus on civilians and primarily on civilians, not on the apparatus of oppression, which would be the soldiers in, in, in Saudi Arabia, outside the locus of conflict. Again, in focusing in New York and D.C., there obviously builds the argument for terrorism.
So I think that that hopefully makes the, the paper a little bit more clear uh, going forward. And if there's any questions, please bring this up on, on Thursday. So preview of next week, Road to 9-11 documentary. Excellent, excellent documentary. Uh, please, uh, please watch it. It's on YouTube. It's really excellent. Uh, and then the Fareed Zakaria article, Why Do They Hate Us, kind of goes along with that documentary. And when you're going through it, think of the political, social, economic, cultural, religious, and historical causes of 9-11. Uh, and then terrorism finance, uh, I gave a few readings. What I want you to focus on is, uh, so you have the, the, the Napolini lecture, uh, but what I want you to focus on is the ISIS stuff, the ISIS Inc. from Newsweek, um, the ISIS documentary from BBC, uh, and think about the patterns of terrorism finance, uh, you know, from the Napolini lecture and how it relates to ISIS financing that's currently going on. So that covers uh, week three. Uh, if there's any questions or issues, please let me know, and I look forward to the discussion section.